Alright, so now it's time for our question and answer portion of this. Uh, now it's time for our question and answer portion of this today's talk. Um, volunteers are floating around with paper and pens if you have any questions for Crystal and write it down. I will direct the questions to her myself. So, to start off, we'll start off with America. So you said you've been to 16 different states. Mm -hmm. What are some of your favorites? I can tell you Ohio is not one. <laughs> My experience in Ohio was horrible. We got woken up at 6 o'clock in the morning by a fire alarm, and we went to this small town, and they didn't even know where the hotel was. And so that's definitely not one. But I think I really enjoyed California um, and parts of it. Uh, the beaches were beautiful. Uh, I'm a beach person, though, so I really, really enjoyed it. But, you know, the thing is, there's no place like home. And I actually was kind of in California for a month. And after being there for two weeks, it's like, I kind of miss North Carolina. I miss the, the slow pace of things. And so um, North Carolina is probably my favorite, but I live there. But to visit was California. And what about countries? What's your favorite countries you've been to? Israel, hands down. I really enjoyed Israel because the thing about we travel all over the country and they have different types of water there. They have the Dead Sea where you kind of float because of the buoyancy and the, the content of salt in the Dead Sea. It was amazing. And then they have the Red Sea, which has tropical fish swimming in it when you walk two feet out into the water. They have the Mediterranean, where you just go swimming. And the Jordan River, um, that has fish that's this big, like just swimming. And I was like, whoa, okay, I'm not getting in that. That's cool to see. So Israel, definitely. Excellent. So you mentioned using your own network. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any particular, besides like Facebook and social networking, mm -hmm. do you have any particular websites or books that you've found Pretty really helpful. Um, websites, I like um, as far as booking goes, agoda.com. I've noticed that um, a lot of people have uh, recommended that to me. Agoda.com is great. There's also a sky scanner, a kayak, a trip advisor. Trip advisor, I get a lot of information about what's good to stay at and where to go. I found that their reviews are very, very helpful. Um, but as far as prices go, probably sky scanner and kayak if you're traveling. Do you use guidebooks at all when you travel? Probably no. I, I really talk, I use more of my networks than asking people where they go, but um, I don't really use guidebooks. Cool. Um, so you also mentioned culture and researching a culture before you go. Mm -hmm. Have you personally had any major cultural faux pas during <laughs> your travel experiences? Yes. <laughs> um, when I was in Jerusalem, uh, let me tell you, Jewish religion, it's, it's intense, um, but they are very particular about their Jewish laws, and they're very um, strict on those. I remember on the elevators, I think it's on Saturday, the elevators stop at every single floor. So me and my friends, we got on the elevator, we're like, three. Why is it working? And then it just it stopped on every single floor. Like, we're like, what, what's going on? And later on, they told us, oh, it's Shabbat. Like, it stops on every floor because pressing a button for the elevator is work. Okay. But we were in a restaurant one night, and um, in this really nice hotel, and we would order wine every night with our dinner, and we had just went to Cana, and I bought some wine there because story of Jesus and the wedding wine, I was like, hey, wedding wine, this is good, okay, look, I'm gonna buy some of that. And I took some home for my friends who were getting married, but I was like, I'm gonna try it. So I had it on the table, and um, I was drinking the wine, and all my friends were drinking the wine from the hotel. And this guy, who we later named the Kosher Cop, came by, and he, oh, he was like staring at it like, oh, and he grabbed the wine off the table, it was like a small bottle, and he took the wine and like, was like looking at it to make sure that it met, met the, the requirements of kosher by it or whatever you want to call it. Um, so anyways, it wasn't kosher wine, and so he started yelling at our mentor, who, who um, my mentor, my professor, who was like our group leader, started yelling at him. Um, and saying that we ruined the entire meal, I ruined the entire meal, um, that everything had to be thrown away because everything had been contaminated because it wasn't kosher. Um, later on, the, the chef or the person who was over at the, the restaurant area, he was like, don't bother them, like they spend a lot of money here, like let them have their wine. Um, so it was, it was okay, but it was a huge, like, I, I didn't know. And, um, and so I really, I really felt horrible about that afterwards. But 
like I said, later we kind of nicknamed him the kosher cop and we laughed about it later, but it's something you definitely don't get caught in that situation. Make sure you know the culture um, so that you don't offend or like something of that of a religious nature, especially um, the people who are in your area. Of so you, you mentioned taking pictures, take pictures wherever you go. Yes. Um, if you're traveling alone, would you recommend ask, asking a stranger to take a picture for you or do you think that's too risky? Um, depends. Make sure you research. Um, <laughs> talk to people. I've heard in, my friends went to Malaysia uh, a couple of months ago and my friend got mugged. Someone stole her bag. Um, he was on a motorcycle and just stole her bag and like kept going. And, um, and so just make sure that you know kind of like the, not crime rate, because that, that would take a lot of research, but ask people, hey, is it safe if I ask people to take pictures? Um, people that have been there and kind of gauge it. I mean, you can kind of tell people who are a little shady or not. Um, for me, I'd probably do it because I'm uber trusting. But um, but definitely be safe if you do that as far as asking other people to take pictures. Of course. Do you have a favorite new food that you've tried while traveling? Mm. I really like hummus. <laughs> um, when I was in the States, I ate hummus in, um, and it just so bland and I didn't like it but when I went to the Mediterranean and had it like the real stuff um, it absolutely changed my my perspective on it and so I really miss that and, and just Mediterranean food in general it's very fresh um, uh, very healthy and I, I think that's still that's my favorite food but I really in, in Korea I'm a kimchi fan I like kimchi jjigae, kimchi jjigae, like I'll eat any kimchi awesome so have you traveled a lot in Korea since being here? Mm, I'd say so-so. Um, I've done a lot of the experiences, the festivals, I've seen those. I've been to Seoul. Actually, not a huge fan of Seoul. It's too big. Don't like it. Um, but I really like the small towns and, um, and getting to know some of the locals. I, I'm more of a local, local kind of person. I want to know more people. Um, I don't like to go to the touristy things. I want to, to meet people on the farms and ask them questions through a translator, of course. Um, but uh, I haven't been able to travel as much as I would like. But I do plan on staying here for at least five years, so I know I have plenty of time to travel. Do you have a favorite place then in Korea that you've been to? Jeju. Silly question. Jeju. All right, so we have a lot of questions today, but it's time to wrap up the Q&A session. Uh, Chris will be around for a little bit after the talk, so if anyone has questions that weren't able to be asked today, definitely you can direct them to her after the talk. But one last question for you. Do you have your next travel adventure planned? And what, if so, what is it? My next travel adventure is to go home. Um, I'm going home for Christmas, um, but I've already started talking to people, and I'm going to travel while I'm at home, because the adventure, it can continue in your home city. Like I said, Guangzhou, even if you've lived here your whole life, there's so much to still explore. you just got to find it. So when I go home, I've already started talking to my family. Let's go here. Let's go try this out. Places that I've just never been before. I want to go see those. So... The next adventure is just North Carolina. Very cool. Well, thank you for your excellent talk today, Crystal.